Yeah, thank you. So I will talk to you about the chiral icosahedral head elastegrity. That's a mouthful. And it's something I talked about two years ago. Uh, but this time, we're going to look at what happens as this thing moves. So it's the geometry of motion like, rather than folding. Uh, I am not going to discuss how art gave rise to math. My email is there. I have written that down. And I will, you can find the definition of dactylognosis. It was uh, some art exercises assigned in architecture school. So let's start with the definition. Um, the chiral icosahedral um, hinge elastegrity relates to, um, tens to the uh, six strat tensegrity. They, they, they both are floating, these, these rigid elements floating in an ocean of uh, elasticity. It's pre stress for the tensegrity. Uh, there are some important differences. First, the numbers and the elements that make it, eight tetrahedra and 12 hinges of three versus six strats. But then the way they deform is very important difference. The, you can see here the six strat, a version of it, which you can flatten it and goes up, but it goes in different directions versus the more orderly. This one, you press straight down, and it, uh, and it goes along a predictable trajectory. And, most and a very important aspect is the ease of assembly. The, the uh, elastegrity is made out of a flat piece of uh, memory um, membrane, and, and uh, it self-assembles. And it becomes many different things. Here is the elastegrity but it becomes a cube, an octahedron, a tetrahedron. Uh, that's what I talked last time. I'm just reviewing quickly the, the um, dodecahedron. And a flat square jumps into a cube, becomes the hypercube, and even um, has the symmetry of three tensegrities, the 30 strat, uh, the 6 strat, and the, and the 12 strat. But this was the, the object. This is the decahedron with a right angle that triggered um, the discovery of, uh, you can see here with uh, Professor Bansov, um, recreational mathematics in a local uh, coffee store. Uh, the, the regular uh, 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 turning into a monohedron, which is a congruent, congruent faces, but not regular. And as the, the, the side of the pentagon shrinks, becomes a rhombic. And here was my, so we discovered that because he put the coordinates and uh, generalized my finding of this single, single uh, structure. So I decided to examine the movement. The movement, uh, you saw it, but it's too quick. So I built this uh, that has the axis. And you can see here 13, by the way, three, um, Orthogonal ones, I don't have them here, they are, they are in the slide, going through the slits and they, they stay stable. And this thing gyrates, closes, and, and then four, four axes, you get the four, uh, the eight tetrahedra that spin around those axes as they slide towards the center. And uh, then the six, the six that go through the diameter that collapse, as you can see here in the octahedron, um, with, the, with the three orthogonal. But they gyrate. They don't go straight in. And as I was doing that, I realized that the slit closes when it expands in a cuboctahedron, closes when it's an octahedron, and then it has to be a maximal opening. Where is that? So that made me start looking and I discovered one way to compute it is to, to realize that it, when the dihedral angle is 90, you, um, you get a, 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 a regular dodecahedron with the 12 vertices of the 8 tetrahedra and the 12 vertices of the slit pivot points. So the little red lines is the opening of the slit. 
here. And when, when you press it down and the slit closes, the little dodecahedron in the center becomes smaller and smaller until it vanishes into a point. And it stays regular throughout the movement. But if you move the other way and you pull it out, then, uh, then, you, then the slit becomes smaller again, but the other four vertices of the, of the dodecahedron become bigger. So there, there it is again, the monohedron um, that we had found through folding. Now it appears through movement. And when it becomes a cuboctahedron, um, it becomes, you can see here, you get a rhombic. So the rhombic is when the seconds. side of the uh, uh, goes to zero, the side of the pentagon. And that's my last slide. You are done with time? OK, so that's the last slide of the significance. So when the dihedral angle is less than 90, it becomes tensile. Otherwise, it becomes compressive. So it has application. It's not just pure math. Thank you very much. If you want to learn how to fold it, there will be a puzzle in your, in your gift bag. And you can always visit at the table on Friday. And you can email if you cannot um, solve it. Thank you.